Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, so this week I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the interface. I know we've been talking about some more sort of in-depth and really sort of um, involved questions, but I thought it was a good time now for us to just take a step back and to go back to the beginning, basically. Because one thing that I found on my travels is um, when I go and I talk to people, Often they'll know, you know, how to use the product, they'll use the product every day, but there might be some um, hidden functionalities or some tricks about the interface that they just aren't aware of. And these little handy tricks can really speed up your, um, your workflow uh, when you're working with these products. So I thought I'd just go back to the beginning today and do that. Um, and I know that I'm building up a list of things to talk about over the, over the next few weeks that I've gotten as requests from you guys. So there's lots of exciting stuff to come. So I'm going to start today with Storeboard Pro. Um, this is the first time I've opened up Storeboard Pro on Tip of the Week, and I'd love to do more um, stuff on Storeboard Pro as well. So um, that's why I thought I'd start out with that today. And most of the stuff that we're going to talk about in Storeboard Pro will also carry over into Animate, Animate Pro, and Harmony. Okay, so let's get started now by looking at Storeboard Pro. And um, I've got my interface open here on that first workspace, which is the drawing workspace. And that's where I'm going to show you most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today. Um, and the first thing I want to mention with the interface is that um, there are a few different windows that I have open here at the moment. Um, I mean, by window, I mean these little sections. So I've got a section at the bottom for thumbnail. I've got a section in the middle here for camera. And I've got some sections on the right hand side. And um, all of these sections are sections that you can create yourself. So let's say, for example, if I hit the X button, that can clear out one of those windows out of there. So I can X, X, X if I want to get rid of a window. If I want to add a new window back in, I can either add the, the window through my Windows tab at the top where I can select Windows and then maybe Tool Properties. And it might add it as a floating window, but then you can always take a floating window and you can drag and drop it, and in this case I'll drag and drop it over to the right hand side, which will dock it then on that side. Just like you can dock something in your interface, you can also pull it out. So let's say if I have my tool properties window here and I'd like it to be its own window again, I can drag the tab, and if I drag it until it's kind of just a square, that's going to make it a floating window. I can drag it to the bottom if I want things to go like on top of each other. I can drag it to the side. This is something that's really nice about this interface is this ability to put things basically wherever you want them to be. And I, I really suggest that when you're getting started with any of our products that you get your workspace set up in a way that you're comfortable with. And one of the things that um, has been a response on the Storeboard Pro front is with the advent now of having the new, new brush tool properties that are sort of um, the same as what you see in Animate, Line, and Harmony, um, what happens is you have a color tab and you have a tool properties tab and these two tabs are separate and it's a little bit um, maybe let's say annoying to try and um, adjust those um, things separately. So one of the things that you can do though is you can take either your tool properties or your color and you can just drag it below and then this way, now you can see both the color window and the tool properties window at the same time. And if you do want to go back to the old way, you can also, instead of the color tab, you can choose your brush presets tab, and the brush presets looks a lot more similar to what you would have seen before. So if you've got your brush preset tab at the top here, when you click on one of these, it's going to select that brush preset, which saves all of the tool properties, your minimum size, your maximum size, all of those things and it also saves the color with it and then you can have your minimum or you can have your tool properties down here so you can adjust your minimum maximum size if you need to on the fly um, but you know you have this window at the top that you can click on which makes it easy to select those brushes right there now one of the other things um, related to brushes is uh, the concept of being able to modify the size of your brush and this is true uh, for Animate, Animate Pro, and for Storyboard Pro. So what happens is that when you're using the brush tool, uh, then when you have a tablet and you're using your um, stylus on your tablet, when you press lightly, you get a thin line, and then when you press harder, you get a thicker line. And um, sometimes you want to just be able to visually adjust 
how thick that line is. Um, and the way of doing that is using the O shortcut. So if I hold down O, while I'm holding down O, I can click and drag, and you can see it gives a circle that's going to um, show how big the maximum size of my brush will be. And then when I draw with it, when I press hard, that's how, that's how wide it will be. If you want to adjust the minimum size, you can also do that as well. And the minimum size can be adjusted with Shift and O. So if I hold down Shift and O at the same time, and I drag this out, you see that adjusted the minimum size of my brush. So now even when I press lightly, I have a thicker line, and when I press heavy, I have the thick line that I set with my O shortcut. So, I mean, this is extremely handy. I, I make use of the O shortcut all the time. I try to set up my brushes so that I have, you know, a rough sizing for the brushes that I want to use, but I use the O shortcut all the time when I'm trying to draw and trying to get things the right size. Now, when you're working with the pencil tool, um, in the pencil tool, in um, Storyboard Pro and in Animate and Animate Pro, the pencil tool is a, is a line of one thickness. So when you're using the O shortcut to adjust, the, you, it's actually adjusting internally the maximum size. So that means that the O shortcut, not Shift O, but the regular O shortcut, is going to let you adjust the size of your pencil. When you're working with Storyboard Pro 3D or with Harmony, those products have the thick and thin pencil line, the new true pencil. So in that case, you still have your minimum and maximum size that you can adjust with the O and the, and the Shift O keys, just like you can with the brush tool. So let's return to the brush tool for a moment uh, because there's some other little tips and tricks here about the brush tool that I want to um, share with you. So, so far we've talked about the brush size. What about when you want to draw straight lines? I know you guys probably know that you can use the straight line tool, your line tool. And you can also hold down shift if you want to move that line tool around in increments. So if you want to get a really nice straight line, you can hold down shift. You might also want to turn on your snapping, and then you could snap down so you can get almost a perfect rectangle there. And then if you need to adjust that one contour point there, uh, looks like I got rid of my contour editor on my toolbar here. I don't know why I did that. Crazy. Okay, let's put it back up at the top. By the way, when I'm working in um, Storyboard Pro here, I have enabled um, the flat toolbar because I like to be able to customize my toolbar in Storyboard Pro. So if you want to customize your toolbar, you can do that, but you just need to make sure that you set it to be a flat toolbar. And um, that is something that is going to be in, here we go, in global UI. So if you select global UI, then there's that flat toolbar and requires relaunch. So that means that when you, when you check this checkbox, you've got to check it, and then you also have to close and reopen the application. And then it's going to just take all of your tools, any tools that were nested. So any tools that when you have a little triangle at the bottom, they will now all just be back at the top. But what this means is that you can right click there and do your customize and you can select exactly which tools you want showing. So I find that pretty handy, uh, particularly on the Storyboard Pro. I don't use it so much in Harmony, but it's just a personal preference kind of a thing. So now that I have my contour editor there, I can just select this point. And even with your contour editor, you can nudge things with your arrow keys. And you can nudge things in larger increments by holding down shift while you're using the arrow keys. So, you know, if you wanted to get a perfect box, that's another way of doing it, is just by using your line tool. Now, I wanted to return to the concept, though, of using the brush tool to draw a straight line. If you are using the brush tool and you hold down the shift key, that will draw a straight line with the brush. If you hold down shift plus alt, it will draw a straight line in increments. Now, if you do this, though, I just want to point out that there is a slight difference between using the brush tool to draw a straight line and using the line tool. When you use the line tool, it's a pencil line that has a thickness that you can adjust after you've drawn it with your tool properties. Now, this is not going to be the case when you draw a line with your brush tool, because when you draw a line with your brush tool, it's drawing a brush style line, meaning that the contour points are available on the outside of your line. But the thing that is nice about using the brush tool to draw lines 
is that you have the ability to enable a texture on it. So if you did want to use, if you are comfortable or familiar using the texture brushes, if you're using the texture brushes and you need to get a straight line, then pretty much the only way of doing that in Sorbo Pro is to draw that line with your brush tool and then that's how you can get a straight line out of it.